So Delta 274 is climbing out of Tokyo's Haneda Airport when they have an emergency? It's hard to say. It kind of unfolds and unwraps. Here, let's watch. I'll show you. Delta 274, contact Tokyo Radar, Wagon 9, Dismount 02. 2802, Delta 274. So, so far, normal departure out of Tokyo. They're 35 seconds into the flight. They get handed off to departure. At that point, the pilots are thinking about climbing out. Shortly after that, they're going to think about getting their oceanic clearance so they can start their long journey. This flight is going to Detroit, Michigan. It's going to be a very long flight indeed. They're kind of trying to get ahead of the airplane. Something's going to happen. Is it an emergency or isn't it? It takes a while to unwrap. Watch. And Tokyo Delta 2747, freak again. A little hard to understand. 1902. So it's, in, it's important okay. for the pilots always to clarify that if they don't understand. There's always a language At barrier. Tokyo, hello, Delta 2274, 19.5 or 220. All right, Popo, and we'd like to request 220. We're working on a maintenance issue, please. Oh, okay. So they've been cleared to a point called Gulbo, G U L B O, uh, and they're climbing up to flight level 220. That's 22,000 feet. And they now say we've got a maintenance issue. And it's interesting the way the pilot worded it. And I would have worded it the exact same way because when it's something that's not a clear cut, emergency you want to give honestly as little information and little less information is better why because if you give too much information you're going to get a barrage of questions from the air traffic controller that are really unnecessary because you don't really know exactly what's going on with your airplane just now uh, it's usually some sort of indicating problem that hasn't turned into something worse is that the case here well we're going to find out in a minute Okay, so they're looking at their issue. Go ahead. Delta 274, do you have something wrong with you? Uh, yeah, so we're talking to maintenance uh, control right now. We have an indication that's abnormal, and we're leveling at 220 for now, Delta 274. Okay, so the first question from air traffic control is, do you have, is there a problem here? And that's a natural question. If he'd given him a whole bunch more information, there would have been a barrage of questions. So he asked him just the one, and he comes back and says, well, we're on, we're talking to our maintenance control right now. So how would they do that from the cockpit? Well, they, there's a satellite radio up in the cockpit, and the captain or the first officer, either one, or if there's on this flight a third officer, they can uh, order them to do it. But they're going to dial up the frequency, get connected to uh, their maintenance, their main maintenance guys, and say, hey, here's an indication we've got what do you think so it's something that's not exactly clear-cut if it's a clear-cut emergency you're going to get an indication on your screen that refers you to a checklist and you're just going to work through that checklist you don't need to call anybody it's the ones that are kind of in between not quite an emergency yet uh, but it could be if we don't pay attention to it so they're talking to maintenance trying to get a, a feel for what's going on meanwhile they just kind of want to level off at 220 let's not get too far away from Haneda because we might need to come back let's see let me know when you can fly all code thank you all right let me know when you can fly we'll let you know all right so they tool out over the ocean a little bit Tokyo Delta Go ahead. I believe we're going to have to come back to Tokyo. Uh, we're still talking to maintenance. Like to request the heading south so, so we don't get too far away. Okay, so this is great, what we call a, a, a great head work. Uh, the captain is thinking, you know what, I think we're going to have to come back to the airport. And before we get too far away from this airport uh, and we have to turn around and come back to the airport, let's just start getting headed over there right now. Uh, and so he asks for a vector to come back around because he's, he's probably at this point 80% sure he's going to come back and land. Uh, and if that changes, they've still got enough fuel to turn around and, and head out. They're probably not going to because, uh, as we're going to find out here in a minute, it's an engine indication. Now, what could be an engine indication that isn't a full-on emergency? Well, um, he's going he's gonna to dispense the information here in just a minute. And actually, uh, uh, okay, heading 150, thanks. Delta 274, I'm heading 150, maintain flight about 220, and uh, just confirm you need uh, for some time for travel city. 
of her. Do you need some time for troubleshooting? Yes, we do. We'll be right back, but first, a quick word from our sponsor. You know, flying teaches you a lot about preparation. Before every flight, there's a checklist, fuel, weather, systems, the works. You don't just hope everything's fine. You verify it because your safety depends on it. But when it comes to my health, for years, I wasn't following that same logic. I'd brush off little things, delay checkups, or tell myself I'd get around to it. And honestly, that's not a great flight plan for staying healthy. Truth is, that's like ignoring a warning light on the dash. Small issues can turn into emergencies if you let them. And I'm in a season where I want to be around for the long haul, for my family, for the people I care about, and honestly, just to feel better day to day. Plus, why would I put things off when there are resources out there that make seeing a doctor or specialist extremely easy? That's where today's sponsor, ZocDoc, comes in and really helps me stick to the checklist. It's a free website where you can find doctors who actually take your insurance, see their availability, read reviews, and book right then and there. No phone tag, no guessing, no circling the runway, just simple, clear, and fast. And ZocDoc isn't just for one type of care. They have more than 100,000 providers across nearly every specialty, from mental health, dental health, eye care, skin care, and much more. You don't have to talk to anyone. Just book with a few clicks. And here's the best part. You don't have to wait months. ZocDoc appointments happen fast, usually within 24 to 72 hours, and often same day. That means when something comes up, you can actually deal with it right away. No more waiting months to book and then even more months to actually be seen. So if you've been putting off that appointment, don't wait for someday. Check ZocDoc instead. Go to ZocDoc.com slash Captain Steve, also linked in the description, to find and instantly book a top-rated doctor. Big thanks to ZocDoc for supporting the channel. Sponsors like this help us to make more content for you. The other two, main camp right up on 220. Okay, sir, heading 150, maintain 220. Yeah, we're still troubleshooting. We'll uh, get back to you in a couple. Set up this episode copy. How many minutes, uh, how long do you need for troubleshooting? Uh, three to five minutes, I think. Say again? Uh, three to five minutes. Call it five minutes. There you go. Okay, and the phone number, uh, what is the nature due to flight control program? See, here's the barrage of questions I was talking about earlier, right? How much time do you need? And when you declare an emergency, either a pan, 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 or a mayday, 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 um, then they're going to ask you, what are your intentions? You're going to have to tell them souls on board, your fuel state. All three of those things are kind of reflexive. They're part of the procedure that everybody is trained on. In this kind of, let me call it a quasi-emergency, right? It's not quite there yet. He's going to now ask him, you know, back and forth, back and forth on the radio. These guys are trying to talk to maintenance. They're trying to figure out what's wrong with their jet. They're trying to get turned around. They've got checklists they got to work through. They've got other circumstances like they're overweight and they got to communicate with the flight attendants and the passengers as well they got a lot going on in the cockpit and now they're getting a barrage of questions from air traffic control they're all necessary but again the more brief you can make your communication at this point the better he first comes back and says uh, between three and five minutes the the air traffic controller is going to get confused by that. What, what did he say just say five minutes all right and he comes back and he says let's call it five minutes Engine indication. An engine indication, he says. That's the first indication that we have that they've got a problem with an engine. But he, he very carefully words it an engine indication. So is there a problem with the engine or is it an indication? That's the first thing I would think if I was this control. And indication, thank you. Okay, so they copy. So they're going to start their turn yeah, back. Right heading 180. Okay. So you get some point in the right direction. Yeah, uh, built uh, 274. I'd like to return back to uh, a request runway uh, 16 left ILS. Okay, now the captain has made it uh, definitive that he wants to come back to Haneda. Now it's 100% they're coming back, and he has requested 16 left and the ILS. So he's being very specific with what he wants. Uh, let's come back and see what he gets. Delta 274, uh, that's fly heading 200, 
Now, why does he want the ILS? It's an instrument landing system approach. That's the one he's most familiar with. It's the most precise approach, and it gets you down to the lowest minimums. So 95% of the time, I fly an ILS approach when I go someplace. Same thing with this Delta crew. Almost every time they're going to fly an ILS approach. So when you've got kind of an emergency or a quasi-emergency, you don't want to be going into doing stuff that you don't normally do. You want to kind of be in your comfort zone as much as you can be. And the ILS is the best approach to this runway. That's why he requested it. He's going to get a curveball thrown his way here in a second. Delta 2104, how about the RMP approach for one? The RMP approach, that's a non-precision approach. It has, has higher minimums, doesn't get you down as low. There's a few more procedures that go with an RMP approach. And in addition to that, it's not something you practice all the time. I fly an RMP approach two or three times a year when I go back to training. Every once in a while, I'll get one at an airport, um, but it's just an extra layer of stuff I really don't want to have to deal with right now if I don't have to. So let's see what the captain comes back with. Mm, he's thinking, nah, I don't think so. That's what I said. <laughs> Okay, so he, he had to ask for it three times, but he finally got it. That's I'm I'm with this captain. I'm like, no, no, no I want the ILS. Delta two seven four. Just confirm you declare you need priority. We request priority at this time, Delta two seven four. Just an indicate. Okay, so this is all right. So you know we've talked a lot on this channel about uh, emergencies and pan pans and, and maydays. This one, I, I don't know why he doesn't declare a pan, pan, pan. This would be perfect for that. And the, the controller is trying to kind of pull it out of him. Like, what, do you need priority handling or not? And, and he's like, well, the, the airplane's flying fine. The engines are running properly. I have an indication problem. And he's going to let us know in a minute what that indication problem is. But he probably needs to get this controller a little bit of help here and the help would be just just declare some level of emergency so now he's got a protocol that he can fall into so everybody's kind of floundering and trying to get a feel for what this guy needs and i think part of this delta could help out a little bit now it's going to take another full two minutes Two minutes for this captain to come out and tell him exactly what's going on with this engine. Okay, he got cleared for the approach. Okay, I'm at 70 vectors violet. Excuse me, he hasn't been clear uh, for the approach. Left? He's gotten Great. vectors to the approach. Uh, Negative tip heading 270, radar vector to Okay, excellent. Uh, 270 heading for now, Delta 270. All right, so 270, he's just going to head west. Delta 274, radar. Go ahead. Delta 274, do you need a field down? Negative Delta 274. Okay, now, interestingly, the controller asked him, do you need to fuel dump? And you've seen enough videos on this channel alone to know that sometimes they dump and sometimes they don't. And why is that? Well, one of the things that they're doing up in the cockpit right now is they're, they're in their iPad and they're going over the landing distance that they need for the runway. Now, Haneda has very long runways, which is very helpful. So they're going to take the weight that they're at currently or the one that they're going to touch down with, and they're going to calculate how much runway they need to to come to to stop if they've got plenty of runway then they're not going to waste the time dumping the fuel they want to get this airplane back on the ground if they don't have enough runway to land then they have to dump fuel so that's one of the factors that goes into it can an airplane land overweight yes can it land safely yes would it would you prefer to land at a lighter weight yes to all of those but again this is why the captain gets paid the big bucks he's got to make the decision or she's got to make the decision of do you land overweight based on the length of the runway that you have. This captain obviously has chosen, hey, we're just going to come back around and we're going to get this airplane on the ground. We'll get the emergency or whatever it is sorted out on the ground. Still don't know exactly what the emergency is. 
All right. So he's tooling back in round. They're still doing checklists. Delta 274 checking in with you. Standard uh, of 150. Delta 274, Tokyo approach. Tokyo QNH 29983. Okay. Delta 274 and the Vector to Lori. Vectors to Lori. Understand Vectors to Lori, Delta 274. Yes. Data 274, confirm, heading 270, Vector 2, Lori. Heading 270, Delta 274. I think this controller likes saying the word Lori. It just sounds like he, he's he's delighting in saying that. All right. We still don't know exactly what's wrong with this jet. Yeah, uh, confirm, heading 270, Delta 274. Data 274, that's correct. Okay. Data 274, approach. Go ahead. Good. Data 274, just confirmation. Uh, your trouble is only indicator. Okay, he said, just to confirm, your trouble is only an indicator. It's it, You only have an indication problem. You don't have an actual emergency. That's what he asked him. Uh, say again, for the <laughs> what? Data 274, uh, you have only indicator trouble. Correct. Uh, just a uh, uh, low low pressure indication, uh, Delta 274. Ah, okay. So six and a half minutes into this quasi-emergency, he finally says we've got a low oil pressure indication. How serious is that? Well, you need to take it seriously. Um, it, it, we're supposed to have certain fuel quantities. We monitor those all the time. But if one of the engines starts to drop rather quickly, especially only six or seven minutes into the flight, you're going to go, wait a minute, that's not right. All right. You know, it's supposed to burn off, but at a normal amount. Uh, and so you might even get a, a low oil uh pressure or loyal oil quantity indication. I think we're going to find out a little bit later. It's actually a quantity problem that they've got that's causing a pressure problem. The engines are still operating fine. There's no checklist really to go through. All it's going to say to you is monitor the engine. You're not going to want to monitor that engine all the way across the Pacific. You're going to want to monitor that engine all the way back into landing at Haneda. So this is a really good head work on the part of this captain. Really great heads up. Um, what they end up doing is getting vectors in. It takes them another <clears throat> probably about five minutes to come all the way back around and land. They end up landing uneventfully. Uh, they're there. Uh, that airplane ended up being on the ground there for another two days. They got the indicating problem fixed. So many times it can be actual low quantity or low pressure, or it could be the sensor that's telling you whether it's high or low or normal that has gone bad. In this case, it was just an indicator problem. The sensor had gone bad and it was giving them an erroneous reading. So had they headed out over the Pacific to go home, could they have made it fine? Yes, you're not going to do that because you don't know whether it's an indicator problem or an actual problem where your engine's burning up a bunch of oil or it's leaking someplace and you don't want it to leak. So the prudent thing is exactly what these guys did here. They turned around, they came back to Japan, they made a full stop landing, they got the airplane fixed properly. Everybody Everybody got reaccommodated and they were on their way and it has a really really good outcome because of the training on both the ATC side and also the air crew side everybody is trained to have safety in mind at all times this is a great outcome well now you know I'm Captain Steve fly safe so as a reminder, we're still in the middle of our Make-A-Wish donation campaign. We're going to run that all the way through the end of the month of September. So if you can, click the link in the screen below and make a generous donation, if you can, to a great, great organization. That's Make-A-Wish.